Hello, brothers and sisters, this is Lisa, and I just wanted to come on and share a few more stories with all of you, and I will post the transcripts to these in the comment section. I'm going to title this video, On This Side of Heaven. The first story is titled, Flushing the Filter. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John 4, verse 14. What's the problem here? I asked myself after I had turned on the irrigation system. Instead of the usual steady clicking, the fertilizer injector was only emitting an occasional erratic click creaking and groaning as if under a burden. The lush blooming flowers in their hanging pots would shortly wilt and die for lack of sustaining water and nutrients that were somehow being blocked from flowing through the irrigation system. It must be the filter, I decided. I shut off the water, disassembled the protective casing of the filter, and removed the screen. It was clogged with so much limestone and other sediment that only a little water could flow through. Flushing out the sediment with a blast of water made the filter good as new again. Today's key verse reveals Jesus as the source of living water from which our souls can freely drink and be satisfied. This water is available to whosoever will. Revelation 22 verse 17 A person who does not frequently replenish his natural body with water will soon dehydrate and eventually die. Likewise, it is vital that we drink of the living water from Christ's found fountain to replenish the thirst of our souls and to remain spiritually alive in him. Satan's aim is to clog the filter of our hearts with sin and untruth, thereby restricting the flow of this life-sustaining water. Through the appeals of our carnal nature, he can cause the sediments of pride, lust, hate, anger, strife, or envy to accumulate in our lives, let us frequently and thoroughly flush the filter by maintaining a good relationship with our Savior so that His living water can always flow through and sustain our souls. And that was written by Joshua Zimmerman. And it also says here, Come to this water, there is a vast supply, there is a river that never shall run dry. Now the next one I'd like to read out to everyone, the title is Too Quick to Talk. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Proverbs 18 verse 13. Our mower was gone. What had happened? After a few quick phone calls, I concluded that it had been stolen. After all, that's how things had been in an earlier theft. One day I had my tools. The next day they were gone. I also remembered that the dog had barked strangely in the previous night. I must warn my neighbors They'll need to make sure their belongings are secure. As I was informing my neighbors, one said, I think your mower is in our barn. What? Then I remembered. A few days earlier, I had driven the mower to our neighbors so I could borrow their tractor. Because of the weather, the tractor was still at our place and the mower at theirs. How foolish I felt. Now I had to go back to my neighbors and correct my incorrect story. 
this experience left me thinking how much better it would have been to investigate matters thoroughly instead of jumping to conclusions. Yet many times, that's what we do. As one person said, about the only exercise some people get is jumping to conclusions. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. Proverbs 15 verse 28 Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. James 1 verse 19 These two verses can be very helpful in making sure we do not speak too quickly, studying or considering our answers and being slow to speak will certainly help us avoid regrets later. There are times, however, when we should not hesitate to talk. We should be quick to express encouragement and appreciation. We should be quick to speak a word from the or sorry for the Lord. But with stories and reports that we hear, let's be slow to speak. And this was by Eric Volkov. And it also says here, Think carefully before you tell, lest false accounts begin to swell. And the very last message I'd like to share with everyone, the title is Ups, Not Downs. But godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy 6, verse 6. While eating at a restaurant, I noticed a man and his son nearby. The son had an obvious physical disorder, but neither the father nor the son acted as if anything was unusual. I found it encouraging to see a father exert such a positive influence on his son, and to see a young man display such poise. I could tell that they both enjoyed the exceptional relationship. I stopped by the table to tell the father what an impression he and his son had made on me as I observed them interacting. In our discussion, the father mentioned that his son had Down syndrome. Upon hearing this, the son quickly looked up and said emphatically, I'm not Downs, I'm Ups, and then looked down and continued eating. As I was leaving, I put my arm around the little man and encouraged him to maintain his up attitude. What a noble spirit! What an outlook! What a testimony, not only for the son, but also for his parents. They helped him to see the brighter side of life when reality could be very discouraging. What a lesson in contentment from someone who may be as close to an angel in human form as we will see on this side of heaven. How many times have I been downs when I should have been ups? There are very few good reasons for downs because our Father has promised, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Remember the words of the psalmist, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Psalm 42, verse 11. And this was written by David Geip. And it also says here, Not to be out and out for Christ is to be down and out. And that is the end of these messages. I hope they all blessed you as they blessed me. You all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.